my name is Lee Hubbard. I'm an alcoholic drug addict. Yeah, yeah you are. Uh, it's good to see you guys today, bro. This fucking house is packed right now, bro. You guys are fucking maxed out, huh? Cots. Cots. I love that, dude. Uh, I was laying in bed last night, dude. Like, yesterday was, like, kind of, a, like, a reflective day. I was getting fucking, you know, getting blasted and shit. And, uh, I was just, like, laying there, and I was just thinking, dude, like... <coughs> I remember when I was fucking shot out, dude, right? I was behind the LA Fitness on fucking 21st and Northern, right next to the Circle K. Like we had, you know, it's like the homeless, you know, it's just me and the fucking homies, you know what I mean? For a couple shopping carts. And uh, I just fucking, I don't know why I had this thought, man, but I had this fucking, you know, this thought came back in, the memory flooded, dude, and I was just sitting on the fucking curb, bro, and I just was, filled with pain and I just couldn't stop crying bro it's like I didn't want to cry but the water just kept fucking coming bro you know uh, I was so alone dude and then I led into other you know thoughts dude I remember because like that was like the main area right uh, another time it was like behind like 19th and uh, northern well it's kind of like 23rd and Alice, dude. There's like an apartment complex that's over there. And then there's like another one behind it and you know, next to it, right? And there's this fucking old golf course, bro. It's like in the middle and it's surrounded by all these apartment complexes, right? And it's like, you know, if you're a tweaker like I'm a tweaker, bro, you know what I mean? You just go from a fucking one apartment complex, you know, dumpster system to the next one. You come up and all kinds of shit you find, you know what I mean? But Another thought that came to my mind was like, you know, I just fucking cop, bro. Me and my homie JP, we just fucking picked up, man. And, uh, you know, we're cutting through, you know, uh, this golf course. And I see these fucking kids that are playing off on the side, bro. And, like, I get this fucking gut feeling. And it's like, I just dismiss it because I'm going to get my issue, you know. And uh, as we get closer, I see this kid that's, like, running towards me, bro. You know what I mean? And like, I fucking know, right? So I take off fucking running, right? And it's my kid, dude. My son is like saying, dad, dad, right? Because his fucking mom stayed in those apartments. She took me and my, my wife in when she was like, I don't know, like six months pregnant, bro. And uh, I had a crippling habit, habit. They told me I couldn't stay there no more, right? Uh, so I stayed close to where my wife is, not because I want to stay close to where my son is, dude, but you know, she's my PIC, bro. And uh, I remember the pain of that, dude. Fucking taking off running, running away from my son, you know, and getting down, getting my issue at the other end of the business centers at the uh, opposite end of the, the golf course, right where the LA Fitness is, bro. Mm -hmm. And uh, I just remember the pain then, right? I remember, you know, when I fucking got my issue, bro, like I remember that it, it rung my bell, my eyes were fucking vibrating, and I had to fucking sit down for a second, but I still was feeling the pain, you know? And then it happened again, the fucking water just kept coming, bro. I couldn't, I didn't want to cry, but I couldn't stop crying, bro. You know? I was just so fucking alone, bro. I was so alone, dude. And it was just painful, you know? It was painful. And I think, like, to play off of what Danny was kind of saying, you know what I mean? Like, you know, you know, your sponsor asks you to do something while you're here. It's funny, like, you're out there running and doing what you're doing, and the homie's like, hey, bro, there's this fucking house at, or apartments at the end of the block, and they just fucking re-up. Like, we're going to go and fucking kick the door, and we're going to go run all their shit. You know what I mean, we'll zip tie and go, dude. Right? But somebody asks you to write out your fucking life story, and it's like, I'm not doing that. <laughs> like, it's just funny to me, bro, because it's like... I was that guy, right? Like this guy's like fucking got this roadmap for me, right? So that I can stop being the snake and start shedding this fucking old skin so that I can have new fucking skin to move around, right? If you guys know about snakes, dude, like it's a process when they start fucking shedding. And sometimes, sometimes it requires, you know, the handler or, you know, the power greater than them to like fucking go and take tweezers and pick off the fucking shit that gets stuck behind and left behind, like a piece of 
you know, skin gets covered over the eyes and shit, and they can't open their shit. You gotta go fucking pick it off with a pair of tweezers so their shit will open up and it doesn't get infected and fucking fall out, right? And it's kind of like the process of what recovery is, dude. Right, I come in here wearing this fucking old skin and I got this mask on that I need to portray to the people that's in treatment with me to half of these motherfuckers, if not 75% are gonna relapse and die around me, but I still feel this need to wear this mask and present this thing that I'm not. I'm in fucking pain and I don't wanna be in pain no more. Right, so I go through what this man tells me to do, right? I share the life story of, you know, the fucking sexual shit that happened to me when I was a kid. You know, the weird gay shit that I did when I was in my addiction, right? Fucking running away from my fucking kids, right? Uh, and I find that I'm resistant to wanting to do that, dude. You know what I mean? Because I don't want to fucking, I don't want to, I don't want to take the mask off so you see the fucking real me, bro. I don't want to get vulnerable because I feel that if I get vulnerable, I'm going to get judged for who I am as an individual. You know, the freedom that I find in doing this step work with my sponsor, you know what I mean? It alleviates that pain little by little, dog. And as the pain gets alleviated, the balance starts to get restored. You know what I mean? Jada was my sponsor, bro, and I tell this motherfucker everything, dude. Right? I started telling this dude shit, and he's like, Jesus fucking Christ, bro. Like hearing this shit that you got going on with your fucking family or what your family has going on gives me fucking anxiety and lets me know that they have fucking unmanageability like a motherfucker. But that's their shit. I'm just simply communicating my emotions so that I don't fucking start bottling that pain up again because my life, it's not unmanageable like that. Right? By doing these steps, bro, and I fucking call my sponsor and I tell him, like, hey, dude, this is what I got going on, right? And early recovery where all of you guys are at right now, you know what I mean? Just like when I was here, right? There's fucking unmanageability all over the fucking place. My first fucking year of sobriety, bleeding into my second, was fucking just filled with unmanageability, bro, right? And I put the mask back on because I fucking, you know, I get out of treatment, I get fucking clean and sober, I want my fucking sponsor to think I'm fucking doing good. I want my wife to fucking think I'm doing good, right? And I start taking myself way too fucking serious, bro. And then shit starts splashing, unmanageability. There's no balance in my life. I got too much fucking recovery, not enough family time, right? Fucking too much work, not enough recovery. You know what I mean? And then I start fucking getting squirrely, bro. You know, as I'm cruising down the street, you know, I see a fucking sign that says, hey, man, you can get a fucking ounce of weed at the mint dispensary for $50 right now. And the fucking thought crosses my mind. It's like, oh, fuck. You know? So the importance of fucking having a sponsor and sharing what it is that I'm going through with this man every day in my life, bro, is that he fucking guides me through what it is that I've got going on. You know? I shared something with him recently, dude. You know what I mean? Because I'm trying to... What I heard when I was in here, there was a guy, his name was Jason and Sarah, that he sat up here and he told me, hey man, just as busy as your fucking addiction is, is just as busy as your recovery should be. Right? So I fucking move now like I moved when I was in my addiction, bro. I don't fucking stop. Right? I keep fucking going. You know what I mean? And life gets fucking busy. Just like when I was out there fucking tweaking, hitting this fucking apartment's dumpster system and this one's dog. <laughs> right? Or the bandos. Right? You know what I mean? Uh, I'm not. Now I go and I hit this fucking support system, right? I go do this with my fucking family and now I've got this going on in my work life and I was sharing something with him that I've got going on in my personal life because I'm trying to start some shit and get it up off the ground, right? And he starts telling me this shit and the funny thing is is that he knows who I am, dude, right? As I'm sitting here talking to you right now, you say something I don't want to fucking hear, then it just it's just a wall, bro, right? So I call him the very next day and I fucking get amends with this dude. I tell him, hey dude, I need to make you an amends because I got fucking mad. I want to tell you to go take that fucking, you know, soda can, shove it sideways deep up into your fucking asshole and go fuck yourself, right? And he was like, yeah, all right, bro, right? You know, he's like, dude, you know, I know who you are, you know? And he's like, dude, you don't need, you don't owe me an amends, bro. Like I guide you, you tell me what you got going on in your life and it fucking, I'm able to help you fucking see where you're not in fucking balance. Look at the fucking, uh, 
you know, the IEDs that are in the road. You know what I mean? Bombs, fucking potholes, whatever you want to call them, dude. On your way to success and recovery, right? And being able to see somebody that has been where I've been at, they don't look like they came from where I came from, but has shit that I've never had in my entire fucking life, and I fucking started to experience these things. It's a far cry where I'm at right now from where I used to be, dude. Right, it's been a long time. It's been a couple of days since I fucking sat down on the curb with a fucking shopping cart and couldn't stop crying. It's been a couple of days since I fucking had to run away from my son so that I can go get an issue, and the issue didn't work, and I still felt the fucking pain. It's been a long. It's been a couple of days since I had to go and fucking clean somebody else's house and wash their fucking laundry, or go run some fucking raffle tickets because I just called my old lady and said, "Hey, I need a new pair of shoes." So I had a fucking blowout just to go raffle them off so I can fucking get more dope. Right been a few days dog since I've had to fucking look my fucking wife in the eye and tell her hey man I'm fucked up I'm sorry I did it again right and finding balance and not taking myself too serious bro I can't do it alone right these dudes that are sitting up here on the panel like I call them and I tell them what the fuck I got going on in my life right like fucking Isaac is a really good friend of mine bro right we're starting to go down this fucking path together dude right and I start fucking telling him these fucking emotions right he's like <laughs> You know, I'm fucking freaking out. And he's like, hey, dude, listen, it's going to be okay, bro, right? He tells, I, what I hear him say to me is the same thing that my sponsor tells me when I start getting out of balance, dude. Is not, not take yourself too fucking serious, bro. You're just a fucking drug addict, dude, right? You're just a fucking dumpster junkie, Lee, right? I don't live behind a dumpster no more, though, dude, right? But you don't forget where you came from because as soon as I forget where I came from, the pain starts coming back in, dude. How many of you guys like fucking pain, bro? I don't mean physical pain, I mean the emotional pain. The shit that's behind your eyes that fucking wells up and you can just feel this shit just closing in, tightening up on your fucking chest. Right? Notice how the hands didn't go up, bro. Right? If you guys want something different, you guys don't want to experience the shit that you've been experiencing, bro, like fucking link up, dude. Right? Withdraw your roadmap, dude. It's just like playing spades, you know what I mean? You just gotta fucking. You know, we lay it out for you, bro. You just follow what it is, dog, and you'll fucking get the books, you'll fucking get the game, and you'll get those fucking soup sets, dog. Right? I appreciate you guys, dude, and I hope you guys all have a good weekend in it, dude. Or weekend, right? Anyway, whatever, dude. Hey, I fucking love you guys, dude, and I hope you guys have a good day, bro. Thank you. Thank you. Jay Dow, drug addict. Yeah. Um, I like in this reading where it says, uh, when a snake sheds its old skin, it doesn't die, it begins a more vibrant life. And so, that I've had that experience. I've, I've shed my old skin, and, um, and I'm moving forward in a new skin, but I'm still a snake uh, without recovery. Um, I mean, even in recovery, I'm still a snake. I just don't act like one. And I don't bite people. And I don't fucking get aggressive with people. Um, I'm not a doormat, but I set healthy boundaries with unhealthy people. And, um, and so, there's a difference between recovery and a fucking recovery meeting. Right now, we're in a meeting. And, and what a meeting is, a meeting is a place where sober, successful alcoholics and drug addicts come to a spot where unsuccessful alcoholics and drug addicts come to a spot so that we can meet and, and where you can meet a sponsor. What's a sponsor? The sponsor's a hardcore loser who's sober and winning in every area of their life. Like everybody up here that sponsors is a fucking hardcore loser. Like the bigger the loser, the better the sponsor. The Lee, great fucking sponsor. Um, and so, like, I met Lee. I don't know, five, six, seven years ago, and I performed on his prison yard. I, you know, I do music and drug rehab, jails and prisons, and anyway, I went to Lewis Prison and fucking performed out there, and that's where he says he met me for, for the first time. And, um, and I just start seeing him in the rooms at Salvation Army and fucking um, 
watching him relapse for a couple of years and shit. At one point he asked me to sponsor him. I was like, I don't know. <laughs> you know, I didn't know him. I was like, no. whatever, bro. And, um, but anyways, like between two and a half and three years ago when he lived here, he asked me to sponsor him. And I said, yes. And so, um, and so we're in a meeting right now, but, but me and Lee are in recovery and we've been in recovery for coming up on three years together. And so before this meeting, I do step work with sponsees on Sunday. I meet them, sign their card, lay out their homework for the week. And I do that on Sundays. And so I was over uh, um, at Midtown this morning. I got a sponsee, did 14 years in prison. He's been out 90 days and he's sober 90 days. And, um, and, um, and, and so I got out of the meet with my sponsee of Midtown to come over to chair this meeting. And I called my wife and went straight to voicemail. So I knew she was on the phone. And then I got over here and I was sitting up for this meeting and she sent me a message. I'm talking to Lee. Can I call you back? My wife's talking to my sponsee and he's not, he's my friend. For, first and foremost today, he is my friend. Sponsorship is not friendship at all. My sponsees do not come to my house. I go to my sponsees houses, which are drug rehabs, jails, and prisons. But when my sponsees get a year of sobriety, they come to my house. So when he got a year of sobriety and he was on fucking fire pretty quick out of the gate, but he did not come to my house until he had a year of sobriety. Not so much for me, but that's my wife's rule. My wife's not a fucking drug addict. She's not an alcoholic. She's never, she's never been drunk or high or smoked a cigarette. Um, but she's a recovered anorexic. So my wife's in eating disorders anonymous. And, um, and so whatever. So uh, fucking he's, when he's a year sober, I have a poker game at my house about every month or so. All my sober buddies come over. We play poker, eat food, fuck around. And when he got a year sober, I bought him into my game and he came to my house for the first time. Now he comes over to my house about once a week with his dog and our dogs fucking play at my house and we fucking talk and shit. Um, but when my wife sent me a text message before the meeting started that she was on the phone with Lee, I knew they were talking about one of two things, his kids or business. Um, I don't have kids. And, and he's got a fucking bunch of them. He's gotten, he's gotten, he had two kids in his life and he's gotten two of his other kids back in his life um, since he fucking got sober. And so when he calls me about problems with kids, he, now he just knows, call my wife about problems with kids. Um, and um, so I knew he was talking about business or talking about kids and it was business. And I thought, when she was like, oh yeah, I was talking to Lee about government housing. My wife's a um, super successful businesswoman. She owned a federal construction company, um, woman owned. Like when I met my wife, she was building buildings in five states on army bases and selling them to the government. Like my wife is highly fucking intelligent, highly fucking successful, could be with any fucking dude she wants to be with. But when she met me when I was about three years sober, she was instantly drawn to me because birds of a feather flock together. Same hang with same. Same recognized same. Um, and, and when my wife met me, she knew she was staying in front of a man who respected women, a man who respected himself, and a man who was living rigorously honest because my wife respects herself, lives rigorously honest, and... Um, and, and financially, like we were here, but as human beings, we were right here. Same hang with same. And so I've been running around with an emotionally healthy woman uh, for nine years. Um, and um, we're together 24 seven. We retired fucking nine years ago. And, um, and we're together all the time. And um, we don't get like eight hours a day while we go off to work and then we come back. Like we are together 20 fucking four seven. And, um, and, and for my wife, and so like when she said, oh, I was talking to Lee about government housing. What I instantly knew is that she's like getting ready to start working again. Um, she's like, 
It took her a long time to fucking unwind and from the life that she was living and busy all the fucking time. It's taken a few years, like she's ready to kind of go back out in the world and start working again. Um, and so when she said I was talking to Lee about government housing, I knew it wasn't because he relapsed and getting ready to move back into government housing. It's because she's getting ready to probably start doing government housing to help drug addicts. And so, um, he is the director of a drug rehab now. And um, he comes to my house and he just opened his own fucking sober living. And he is sober and becoming successful because everybody who gets sober around here becomes successful. That's not so much about being a fucking multimillionaire, it's about what the main topic is about balance. Because one of the promises around money in this program is we will lose fear of financial insecurity. And, and, and that's not about getting fucking millions of dollars. I mean, a million dollars really ain't shit anymore. But, um, but what I discovered when I first got sober and I was in a processing group and the director was like, Jay Dow, if I wheeled in a million dollars cash and gave it to you right now, how would it change your life? I was about two weeks sober when the guy hit me with that in group. And we processed it for a couple of minutes at that. As a homeless drug addict, uh, about two weeks sober, you offer me a million dollars cash and we start processing it. What I discover in a few minutes of processing is I'm back in fear worrying about what am I gonna do when the money runs out? Because my drug of choice is fear and hate. Like in this book, they say resentment's the number one offender. It destroys more alcoholics and drug addicts than anything. Resentment is a soft word for hate. I suffer from hate and I suffer from fear. Um, and what this program has done is, is I can catch myself in fear and I can catch myself in hate. And, and before I open my fucking mouth and hurt people, I can resolve that issue within myself because of this program. Because what we offer in this program with the sponsor, and the cool thing about recovery is, is you can connect with sober, <laughs> successful men. And, and if you go out into the world and, and you wanna be fucking successful, you wanna be a millionaire in the world, um, people will tell you, well then go run around with millionaires and do what millionaires do. But what you'll discover in the world is, millionaires only run around with other fucking millionaires. But in this program, sober, successful men like when I got sober, my sponsor was sober and successful because every man who's fucking sober um, is successful, especially men who are sponsoring other men. And when I started talking about the things that sober, successful men talk about, and I started doing the things that my sponsor and his sober, successful friends told me to do, I got sober and became successful. And so will you. Birds of a feather flock together. And that's what's so cool about recovery because as a homeless drug addict, I was exposed to success, sober, successful men who showed me how to be sober and successful. And that's why we're here. We are here to help you become sober and successful. And with that, I'll pass. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Robert, alcoholic addict. Robert. Robert. Give you guys a little rundown of where I came from, what it's like today. Um, so I come from a broken home. I have two uh, drug addict parents that like us are sick. And it took me a while to get that, bro. You know what I mean? I like blame all my problems on them, so I act a certain way. But like today I know that they're sick. As I'm sick, as we're all sick. Uh, Living with my grandparents in a one bedroom house with three of my cousins. Um, so it was kind of rough, you know what I mean? We had a water hose, no shower, clothesline, no dryer, no small cooler, no AC. But like, <coughs> so I born with a heart problem, bro. Like, mom had me at a very young age. I was premature by a few months. And I had a hole in my heart, in the main artery in your heart, you know what I mean? The biggest part of the heart that pumps the blood through the whole body. So by the age of six, I had open heart surgery. By the age of 17, I had open heart surgery. By the age of 19, I had open heart surgery, right? And I tried to like, steer away from the streets for so long. You know, I would always like downplay my mom for her addiction when I was young. 
before she got locked up. My parents robbed banks. My dad, my mom and dad robbed nine banks, bro. You know, my dad went to prison for five years in the feds. I went to prison to, uh, for a year in the state. My dad got out, robbed three more banks, went to prison for 11 years in the state. My mom has uh, 10 kids and oldest of 10 siblings. You know, they know of me, but they don't know me. You know what I mean? She has six baby daddies. Um, so I've had it rough, you know what I mean? Since my third open heart surgery, I fucking, I've had three strokes, bro, you know what I mean? From having these strokes, I fucking, uh, my heart went into heart failure. So I got sober, so much to say is to uh, get a heart transplant, right? They told me you need to be sober for one year to be put on a transplant list. Uh, I'll be two years in like three days. In three days, I'll be two years sober. So you know what I mean? Okay. Uh, so with that, um, in two weeks, I'm gonna go see a heart transplant specialist. You know what I mean? Go fucking check it out. See what they're talking about. And they told me, you know, like, when I was in the hospital a few years ago, they told me, uh, you have like six months to two years to live, you know? And like nowadays they're telling me, you know, like five to 10, and that's kind of like pushing it. And they're also telling me, you know, with a heart transplant can be fatal because I've had open heart surgeries. But, you know, I tell myself, at least I'm sober and I'm in a position to where I can make these decisions, you know what I mean? Because catch me two years ago, bro, shit wouldn't be an option, you know what I mean? I'm fucking dead out there, you know what I mean? And if I die tomorrow, bro, at least I remember who I am and not something I'm not. Um, this program has given me a different perspective on life, you know. If I die tomorrow, bro, I'm doing right by people, you know. I have an understanding of a higher power, you know what I mean? And like, any way it goes, I'm gonna be straight. Today, I don't have to act on my own behaviors, you know what I mean? From the ghetto, bro, I don't have to act ghetto today, you know what I mean? I don't gotta fucking trip or like think the world revolves around me because it doesn't, you know? When my parents stopped being around, I felt like the world owed me something most of my life. Nobody owes me shit, you know what I mean? By me doing right, I owe that shit to myself, you know? I take guys through the book, you know, as I was taking through the book, you know, I have a sponsor, it's Lee, my grand sponsor, Jay Dow. Um, you know, you just gotta get uncomfortable in order to grow, bro. I remember 45 days in the program, you know, I fucking called home. Hey, man, I'm ready to go home, you know what I mean? My fucking Theo was like, hey, man, check it out. You ain't coming here, you know what I mean? <laughs> you didn't want to fucking be around us. You didn't want to be around us in your addiction, so I didn't want to be around us now, you know? And like, when I was in treatment, bro, I found out I was gonna have to have a heart surgery. Not an open heart, like a less evasive one, which I had last summer, right? And like, I was like, oh, I need to go be with you guys, you know, I might have to have this heart. And like, nah, fuck that, you know what I mean? Like, what would I have to offer them by going home? You know what I mean? I would have done right, you know, I can say this and that and the third, but my actions show different. So, I had heart surgery last summer. I have two incisions right here. I have a defibrillator and some new devices I just came up with, with the hopes of like strengthening my heart, which it hasn't. So that morning when I went in to have this procedure, I fucking, um, I told them like, look, man, like what are you guys even giving to put me under? They said, uh, fentanyl. I'm like, nah, bro, keep that shit. I'm a drug addict, like check my rap sheet, you know what I mean? They're like, well, we give you some morphine. I'm like, nah, I'm good, keep it. Like, what else can we do? So they gave me some uh, Benadryl, bro, non-narcotic. So I was awake for some of the procedure. Yeah, yeah fucking, I was like, hey, are you guys cutting into me yet? They're cutting into me already, bro. I didn't feel that shit though, barely, you know? Look up me procedure, like tripping out, you know? I did, that, I did that for myself, bro, you know what I mean? Cause who's to say like me taking that fentanyl wouldn't have made me fucking go and relapse after I got out of the hospital, you know what I mean? And I, just, I got out, got right to it, got busy, you know what I mean? It ain't nothing new to me, bro. Like, the stakes are a lot higher today than they were back then. I don't have another run in me, you know what I mean? Like, I'm in a good position where I'm at in life today, you know what I mean? I wouldn't throw that away for shit, like. It's a trip, bro. I know God's real in my life today, you know what I mean? If y'all knew, bro, just give it a chance, you know what I mean? And no one told you guys that I love you, and uh, thank you for keeping me sober today. Thank you. Thank you. From all these drugs and apologies handcuffed ain't enough for me and I run an endless losing streak bad luck seems to follow me